Hey, what's up guys? Sir Eminon here, back with another episode of CCC, or Chief Competitive Contenders. Yeah, it's been quite a while since I've done an episode of this, and it's only the second episode, but uh, just a lot of things got in the way as far as other videos I wanted to do, as well as some of the events that I was going to, and I just had a lot of other video ideas in the meantime. But we are back with a episode that I actually recorded on a stream last night on Twitch TV. Um, you guys can go ahead and follow me there if you want to see more uh, shenanigans going on with either this particular series or just playtesting sessions in general. But as you can see here, this time we're playing uh, Zephyr and Dimion. And the poll that I ran on Twitter, which I'll put up on the screen right now, actually had just general pendulum winning. And I tried to make a magician list, but actually it, found, it turns out that those cards are significantly more expensive than these ones, kind of surprisingly enough. Actually, it's not too surprising. The uh, Zephyr cards are quite cheap. So I decided to go with this list instead. And I do actually like some of the um, aspects of the uh, Zephyr cards as opposed to the uh, Magician lineup, which I think is pretty cool as far as being able to readily play around Dark Ruler no more without having to, like side Zephyr cards and you know, just being able to just enable Servant very, very quickly and very easily. So yeah, if you guys uh, definitely want to check out the uh, Twitch stream, I'll put the link in the description as always. And I'm going to be doing this uh, series a little bit differently, or this episode rather, a bit differently. So last episode I did live gameplay commentary and I just had everything edited. But um, first off, the music that I had on stream was actually Animal Crossing music, so that was uh, that's copyrighted, so I can't really do that. But also, um, I actually didn't turn on my OBS setting to automatically save the recording and I really don't want to download a uh, three and a half hour stream not really feeling like doing that so instead we're just going to be doing the commentary and post hope that's okay with you guys if you do prefer live gameplay footage uh, be sure to tell me in the comment section down below or if you like this style better I can also accommodate for this as well just be sure to let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below but uh, again keeping in mind this is a budget list uh, we are going to be putting the prices uh, on screen right now as well as the breakdown in the description box down below if you want to see the API calculated with everything involved. But uh, yeah, that's actually going to be everything I have to say and we'll just go ahead and get into the deck list. Keep in mind that this is not necessarily the optimized list, it's just a list that is under a constrained budget so feel free to make changes as you see fit or within your budget if you are playing under one. So we're playing one copy of Aether to bring off the Hieratic Seal. It's also just nice to be able to pen summon and banish stuff. Uh, three Chronograph, very staple. Uh, Destrudo for the LP target. Endymion, the Mighty Master of Magic, and Mythical Beast Jackal King to bring off Servant. Uh, then we have Ritual Beast, Tamer Zephyr Wendy. Uh, Stellar Knight for Thuban. Um, we have three Servant, three Dark Worm, Gate Zero, Time Gazer, uh, two Zephrath, and two Zephranu. Uh, so for the spells, we have Dragon Ravine. 3 Shrine, Foolish, 3 Oracle of Zephra, Set Rotation, 3 Spell Power Mastery, Terraforming, Upstart, uh, 3 Zephyr Providence, and uh, Zephyr Divine Strike, and Zephyr War for the Traps. For the side deck, it is 3 Lancia, 3 Pancratops, 3 Lava Golem, 3 Cosmic, and 3 Reboot. This is probably where the optimization can definitely be improved on, but um, you know, I mostly prioritize the main deck and the extra deck as far as you know constraining under the budget and then I kind of make the side deck afterward just to see what we have what we have working with um, so these are like some of the cheaper cards available that are usable in pendulum but uh to be honest you don't have to actually access the side deck a lot since most of your deck is engine cards anyway uh, and then the extra deck is vortex to bring off the aggro pain uh, black rose just in case you want another synchro seven this is the flex spot and I couldn't really think of anything good that was in budget so I kind of just Threw this in here. Uh, Dragster, Dweller, uh, B Cop, Borlo, Boro Sword, Guard Dragons, Agrapain, LP, uh, Electromite, Heretic Seal of Heavenly Spheres, Nightmares Phoenix, uh, Cerberus, and Unicorn, and Triple Burst Dragon for the Guard Dragon combo. Uh, what I will say is things I would change, actually, since I am doing this after I already played the five matches. Uh, set Rotation and Dragon Ravine were kind of underwhelming. Dragon Ravine is okay, but I just didn't draw Set Rotation at all. I didn't find either to be super necessary though, so you could maybe change those out if you wanted to. Um, other things, um, again the side deck I already mentioned, and the Black Rose is... I just never went into it. Uh, same with Dweller actually, but there were times I kind of wanted to rank 6 funnily enough. So uh, you could play like uh, Constellar Ptolemy M7 or Utopia Beyond or like Photon Strike Balancer if you wanted to. 
probably won't come up that much, but it actually did a couple of times for me in playtesting. But uh, yeah, let's get into the games here without further ado. Alright guys, so this is going to be the first match on stream, and you'll notice I'm actually not on my alternate account unlike the last one. It's because I actually had uh, viewers play all these matches, and the cool thing with that is that actually it ensured that we got uh, meta matches for every single one, or at least like somewhat meta matches as opposed to, you know, purely entirely rogue. Which I mean, you would probably run into rogue at like a regional, but um, like these are still competitive decks that you can expect to see, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, we just did these all in one go. So the first one is up against Thunder, pure Thunder. Uh, so my opponent goes first, he wins the die roll, and his hand isn't the greatest, but it's playable. So he has a lure into banishing a Dark. Dark is going to search him a roar, and then he's going to go into the Thunder Dragon Hawk before summoning out his Dark, and then making a Colossus. Now we could have gone for a Titan, we were talking about it on stream. Um, and like Roar could have summoned like a Matrix, maybe he could have like went for Summoner and then like be search another Matrix, normal summon it and make like a Coloss two Colossuses that way. Um, like he could have done that if he wanted to, but he decided to just hold the Roar instead for like follow up later on. He felt pretty safe with Ogre and Permanence. So um, yeah, our hand's pretty good even though he has uh, interaction because we didn't really draw search cards thankfully under Colossus. So we can kind of just try and navigate our way through the board. So we go ahead and foolish first for the uh, Dark Worm, and the funny thing is, I drew gate 0 an unholy amount. It was kind of unreal, but thankfully, since uh, we couldn't search it anyway, I guess it's fine that we drew it, eh? Um, so we're going to go ahead and use our uh, Dark Worm Engrave. Obviously can't search, but we don't have a target anyway. Upstart is going to go ahead and draw us another card. Uh, Shrine isn't the best, but we still have another target for it in Destrudo, so that's okay. And then next up, we're going to scale our Zephrath for the third spell, and we're going to use Servant, but it gets met by a Ghost Ogre. So, a bit unfortunate there, but we still have a low scale, so we can still uh, perform a Pendulum Summon, so that's pretty decent. Zephrath is going to send a Zephranu. I could have maybe sent something else since I already had Zephranu, maybe uh, Zephyr Wendy, since it is another uh, scale 7 for Zephrath, but didn't bother doing that. Decided to just go ahead and Pen Summon uh, 2 anyway. So Fanyu is going to go ahead and uh, not search because we're under Colossus. And now we're going to go into Electromite and that gets met by an Impermanence. So we're actually okay here because of this shrine that we drew off the upstart. We actually have a pretty decent play here. So we're going to go ahead and target the Dark Worm with the Distrudo. Then we're going to go and make LP, make Triple Burst. Uh, LP is going to go ahead and summon our Aether. Uh, I actually realized after looking, I was like, oh wait, yeah, we play Aether. Uh, so Aether is actually going to go ahead and banish this Colossus. Then we go ahead and make our Aggro Pain, make Vortex, and then we go Battle Phase, hit for 5k, and then make Seal Main Phase 2. So even with the Colossus and all of that, we actually managed to put up a pretty decent board here, and uh, we have pretty meaningful interaction. So our opponent activates the Lore of Darkness. I know he has a Roar in his hand that he searched off of the, uh, the Dark last turn, and I decide actually it's probably a pretty good idea to negate that. Because his hand, I know, isn't the greatest. He used OG Thunder. So, like, the last card in his hand has to be something, like, absolutely monumental. Um, so, I decide to just use Vortex and negate the uh, the allure straight away. And he reveals he has another Ghost Ogre for the Vortex. That's actually honestly okay with me. I have pretty decent follow up for the next turn, so I'm not too bothered by it. Uh, what I should have done instead of shuffling back a Zephrania was shuffle back the Aether. Um, just in case, like, I wanted to use it with the Heretic Seal, like, bring it out, banish another card. But, um, ended up not being too bad because uh, putting back Zephrania is okay since, you know, just more gas for Zephrath on future turns is okay as well. Since, uh, it needs to be a high skill at all times, as long as this gate zero is there. He uses his Roar's hand effect to grab back his Hawk. Then Hawk will be able to try and grab back Dark. Right here, he can make Colossus, so I'm gonna Seal Bounce it. And uh, this should be the uh, end of the game here. Uh, we have Justrudo just chilling here, and we're able to pretty much amass as big of a field as we can. He's only a 4k life, so we normal summon Servant, make our uh, generic link 2 in Beat Cop. Then we're going to Pendulum Summon uh, after sending a Wendy off the Zephrath. And then we can go ahead and use our Zephrath to search Providence, which uses Divine Strike, just in case anything goes wrong here. 
Um, Destruer can go ahead and target one of our monsters and we can make a Boros Sword and that should be game right there. So yeah, uh, being able to navigate through that board going second was pretty nice. He, we had to contend with Ogre which is arguably one of the best interactions and impermanence and a Colossus and uh, we were able to make a board of negation to stop his plays. But uh, he goes first again in game two and he opens up a dimension shifter. So that's pretty good for him. Uh, he's able to pretty much just fire off everything he needs and of course whenever pendulums leave the scale they normally go to the extra deck but that's because instead of going to the grave they go to extra deck instead so by mechanics game mechanics they get banished if they ever leave the scale and would be destroyed or anything like that um, similar to like macrocosmos and stuff so roar specials out dark he makes colossals after using og thunder dragon dark searches a duo for next turn and he has an ogre in hand once again so I don't feel comfortable extending into Dimension Shifter and a lot of my cards are pretty dead under Colossus so I just decide to go ahead and scale up, Pendulum Summon this Aether, Banish the Colossus, uh, swing for a little bit. I could have maybe used Mastery if I wanted to uh, just to get the um, thing out of my deck. I just like point out to the stream, Shifter is obnoxious. But I ended up just deciding to pass. Like I could have maybe gone for like a Mastery into a Servant normally and then go for an Electromite but Again, that would cause stuff to be banished, and I'm just not really trying to do that. Like, I don't know, there wasn't really a great way for me to get Dark Worm either, because I would have had to, again, commit my normal summon there, and Dragon Ravine can't send Dark Worm since, you know, Dimension Shifter. So, uh, we were pretty stuck. We couldn't really make a Guard Dragon play, I don't think. So, I just decided to pass right there. But, of course, he has good follow-up, because he has the D Thunder Dragon Fusion, and we know he has Duo as well. Um, so, he's going to go... Um, OG Thunder, Chain Titan to kill the Aether, and then do it again to kill the Chronograph. And at this point, I think we basically lost this game. Uh, Roar goes ahead and gets back his Dark, and he can uh, also summon his Duo. So we're not dead quite yet, but we are in a very precarious spot, uh, especially with the Ghost Ogre in his hand. Uh, so we draw a Dragon Shrine, which is pretty good. We're going to go and grab our Servant and try and resolve it. So we're going to scale it up, put the Dark Worm Grave via Shrine, um, and we can actually search, but we had, yeah, we already drew the gate zero once again. <laughs> so uh, we have Terraforming now to search, and we have Oracle of Zephyr to search the Frath. So now I'm like, all right, we can go ahead and use Servant, but that gets, uh, that gets actually met with the Dark into Titan. So he still has the Ghost Ogre. And he has, yeah, he used a Titan Pop there, so we're not in a great scenario. Uh, we're gonna try and use the Zephrath that gets met with the uh, Ghost Ogre, and we lose from there. So, one too many disruptions. Titan's really, really powerful in those kinds of simplified game states. Uh, but now we're finally getting to go first, and uh, we open Gate Zero for the third game in a row. Very, very nice. Um, yeah, we only play one as well. So, we open a Servant at least. But I make a big, big mistake as you guys are about to see, and you're gonna, you're gonna face palm if you're an experienced pendulum player. Uh, and I realized that as I was doing it, I was like, oh crap, I uh, I definitely punted the game here. Um, so I could have normal summoned this time gazer to protect myself from ghost or around the servant here, but I'm stupid. I didn't normal summon it, so I get punished, rightfully so. Very, very big mistake. And I am able to pendulum summon, but it's uh, gonna be bad because he has impermanence as well. So yeah, uh, I definitely misplayed there. Uh, there's no denying that. That was a huge misplay. Uh, we already used Providence, so we're just going to search a Divine Strike with the Zafanyu. Um, and then we're going to try and go for a Dark Worm play for the Guard Dragon since we didn't know summon yet. Um, but unfortunately, I do believe we uh, get Impermanence here. I'm just like checking my strike to make sure that I remember these games correctly. So we just have a Divine Strike and that's it. Honestly, I was tempted to negate this Allure of Darkness, but I was afraid of the other three cards in his hand. They could have been like very, very strong cards like a Battery Man, Hawk, or whatever. Um, but in this particular hand, funnily enough, it would have actually been very good if I negated the Allure because all he would have had was OG Thunder Dragon and that would have actually just ended his turn. So. Like, Allure is actually, in that deck, a pretty strong card to negate. Um, so he draws into the Battery Man. Uh, I have to negate the Roar. And at this point, 
he goes battery man he doesn't actually have a strong play but he can make a colossus which you know he couldn't previously if i had just negated the uh, allure so uh, i did negate the allure in game one um, but that's because I knew every card in his hand. I didn't know the cards in his hand this time around. But honestly, the getting lore is like looking like a stronger and stronger play the more I think about it. Um, he's going to end in his Colossus here, and I draw a dead card because I can't search. Uh, I do go into... Uh, yeah, I go ahead and use my Zephrath. I just don't remember what I do exactly since I played a lot of games. Um, and I just Pendulum Summon the Zephranu, and I sit in it as a body hoping it's enough. He goes ahead and um, uses his uh, Colossus to attack into my Time Gaze. I'm trying to think if he had any other play he could have done here, maybe. Um, like, maybe he could have normaled the Matrix, make Summoner, search another Matrix, but that doesn't really do that much. He could have maybe made Titan as well to search like another Matrix and like get a pop. That probably would have been a decent play if he wanted to do that. Um, but I guess he felt Colossus was safer. Uh, oh no, he is going to make the Titan Gate, or I uh, mean Phase 2. Alright, so uh, that's totally fine. Um, he's going to start chewing through the board here. Um, he does things a little bit out of order, but uh, I we kind of get what's going on. So he's going to try and pop my Zephrath, I believe. And um, he searches the Matrix off the other Matrix. And he uh, I get to protect it with Providence. So I'm no longer under Colossus, but we're in a bit of a tough spot because I know he can use Matrix at any time to you know kill any card. So I use the Distrito here targeting the uh, Zephranio and it brings us up on the board. At this point he uses the Titan to uh, shuffle it away. Or like destroy it but it gets shuffled into the deck of course. So since I'm not under Colossus anymore I can search for a Servant and I haven't used my normal summon this turn. So I can go ahead and normal it, make a Beat Cop, Pendulum summon a bunch, and then try to make a Borlo. That's like my line of thinking. Wendy gets back a Zephranio. And I go ahead and try and make the boil load, but then he goes Nibiru at the end of main phase 1. So that kind of sucks. My token's on 6200 attack, uh, and I blew 32 defense because of Titan. And that definitely was unfortunate, but he actually doesn't have a play available. So we can actually beat him with his own token. Uh, we're going to use the Ravine now to uh, get rid of our Zephranu and pitch a Distrito. This is one of the times where Distri or the Ravine actually did help us. We're going to Pendulum Summon a Wendy and then use Distrito to target the Wendy. I'm thinking, oh, this is like almost game. It's going to be 62 plus 15, but that's not enough. So I decide the other way I can do 15 damage is to make Dragster because it does piercing. So yeah, this is going to be 1500 damage, and he's going to take a 62 from the token, and he draws a solar, which is pretty good, but um, it's not going to be enough because like after he sends it, he doesn't have a way to make a Colossus because his other two Thunder Dragons are in Grave, so his OG Thunder is dead, uh, Shifter is dead, Phantasmi is dead, so like all these cards are actually just dead, um, and we actually steal that game after throwing the... Uh, the time gazer play away so yeah we win the match one against thunder dragons so we'll see you in the next one all right guys this is going to be match two and we're up against cyber orcus this time uh we win the die roll this time so we can ideally combo off and this hand's pretty good it's not the best hand but it's okay it's playable uh so we have servant into zephrath which gets us zephranu uh, we can Pendulum Summon right away, uh, and we get Zephranu to search for a Providence. Providence gets us to a Divine Strike, and then we can uh, go into a uh, Guard Dragon play here. So yeah, we grab ourselves the Dark Worm off the Electromite effect, and then we pop the Zephrath since we already have a Zephrath. And we haven't used our Normal Summon yet, so we can use the Dark Worm as a Normal Summon. We draw a Ravine, which is okay, but that's more for extenders later on. Grab a Gate Zero. And then uh, we put our Zephrath and scale for the third counter of Servant, which puts Servant on the field with the Jackal. This allows us to go full guard dragon combo, and uh, yeah, basically just concedes to that. So at this point, we actually don't know what he's playing. He doesn't uh, tell us, which is you know good because that's like kind of the point of this exercise. Uh, so as far as siding is concerned, I don't tend to like side a whole lot. 
I try and like typically side three cards max. Um, usually, there's too many cards that like are consistency cards that are really important to the deck. I remember like when we were talking about siding, like generally you can side out consistency cards if the utility cards are either too scarce or if they're too important for the matchup. But in this case, the consistency cards are very much a lot of the time the same as the engine cards because a lot of the cards just fulfill very similar purposes. So like you can afford to take out some cards, just kind of hard to, uh, you know, kind of hard to, I guess, to take out too many at the sake of you know, being able to play your deck still. Um, so here he just goes for the standard play as Machine Dupes, so he's able to go into the Orcus combo with Infinity pretty, pretty well, as well as searching Overflow off of the uh, core. So we have to play around a Crescendo, a Infinity, as well as the Negation from uh, Crescendo. Everything's backed up by Ding as well. We're kind of like speeding through everything, and uh, he puts things... Uh, in the wrong zones at first. He also has called by the grave too, so um, pretty difficult for us to play around. Um, I sequence this in the wrong way. I should be doing a uh, servant first before uh, Endymion. So if the spell counters look off, that's why, and we're kind of like talking about it on stream. So that's why it has one counter right now before I used Foolish because of a uh, like I'm supposed to scale this and then scale Endymion. He said it wouldn't have affected his play, so that's that's fine. Um, so we go ahead and send Dark Worm. Um, he called by the Graves it, and uh, we try and use a Servant that gets met by the Infinity, and we know he has Crescendo and Overflow left, so I just decided to pack it up, not really able to play through that one. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of just a case of both decks doing what they want to do. Um, so game three, I'm like trying to play around Disruption as much as I can. Uh, we open Servant as well as the Mastery, so we get two free counters, which is good because we don't open any other spell cards anyway other than, other than Scales. We don't make the same mistake as uh, the first series, and we go over the Time Gazer Normal Summon uh, prior to anything. Uh, but he doesn't have Ogre anyways, so uh, but that's fine. Uh, we get Jackal up to three counters before going into Electromite. Uh, we're going to send Zafranu off the Zafrath. Electromite is going to pop, I believe, this other Servant. No, it's gonna pop the. Did I? Hang on a second. Did I normal summon yet? I yeah, I did normal summon the time gazer. My mistake. So yeah, uh, this this play is okay. Um, we we're just gonna scale the high scale. That's right. I I'm confusing this with another game that I played later on where uh, I didn't commit my normal summon. But uh, yeah, so we have a high scale. Um, and we're able to pendulum summon out the dark worm now as well as the safranu. And we're going to uh. What we shouldn't have done, we shouldn't have uh, gotten back the Endymion, actually, the Servant, off the Electromite. We should have added back Time Gazer, because Ser er, yeah, Servant can only be Special Summon once per turn. That was the mistake that I made. Uh, but luckily, we drew into Wendy, so we were able to do the full Guard Dragon combo uh, with ending on Dragster as well. So I uh, got kind of lucky there, uh, and I played kind of improperly, but um, it's it's okay. I was still like very much trying to learn how to properly sequence things, and uh, that's what you learn out of playing a deck for a while. So lesson learned, don't um, don't be dumb and uh, remember that your cards have restrictions. So we go the full guard dragon combo into seal and then Distrito is gonna come back and then we're gonna make our dragster and set a vine strike. So we have pretty good follow up. Uh, yeah, it's dark ruler, but that's again what I was alluding to earlier when I was talking about the deck at the start. Like, we're able to just freely play around this just within our engine um, very, very, very easily. Uh, so I may actually make a bit of a mistake um, pretty early on into this game here. Uh, so, like, obviously he pitches the harp. And there are some instances where I'm, like, thinking maybe negating dangers in hand is okay when you have this much negation. Like, we can expend the jackal and we still have, like, four solid interruptions. And honestly, like, dangers... Like, with the way that dangers are being played now, like, a lot of the time it's also to just get stuff in Grave, like, even more so than digging for stuff. So, like, the fact that he gets this Harp Horror in Grave uh, was, you know, a pretty, pretty bad sign for me overall. Because, like, in theory, if I, say, just negated it with a Jackal, his hand is now Harp, Rev System, Galaxy Soldier, and Orcus Nightmare. He really doesn't have a play, it's just, like, it's literally just Harp, and he can't get either of these two cards out of his hand, so... And the rest of them's dead too, so realistically speaking, if I negated the Jackalope, that would have actually just straight up ended his turn. 
um, like pretty pretty much would have ended his turn. Like Dark Lord would have forced the Divine Strike, but like that wouldn't have really done anything. Um, so he draws into an emergency. I can't really negate this because he can uh, add just add it back uh, and discard like an Orcus Nightmare off of it. So I uh, can't really afford to use anything on that. Um, so he's gonna force out the Divine Strike now. And a huge mistake here, uh, what I should do is bounce this hers so he can't contact me, but for some reason it totally slipped my mind that he could contact and uh, I just like wasn't even paying attention fully, I was just not thinking. Um, so yeah, I, I should have been paying better attention and uh, definitely that was, a, that was an incorrect play. Should have bounced it, that way I could get like uh, Aether out and banish the Jackal up too so he has a harder time going into Orcus stuff without committing the Harp which I still have a response for in uh, Jackal King as well as Vortex so uh, definitely the incorrect line here um, I just wasn't even paying attention honestly so he's gonna crash the Jackal um, and then he's gonna go Rev System to bring back uh, which I will actually negate with the uh, with the Dragster there um, he could actually contact with the uh, dragster too because it's a machine so I have to keep that in mind as well uh, so galaxy soldier can pitch the cyber dragon they got off the hers and um, he's going to not use the effect of galaxy soldier uh, use the servers to try and force vortex which obviously I'm going to have to use um, but now he still has a play I also realized midway through this I didn't ever actually banish anything off the divine strike uh, so we do that there uh, we uh, use our Vortex, and he still has an Orcus play left. He doesn't play Wand, he plays Gizmic instead. So, um, but either way, I think he wouldn't have really been able to get to anything, because, like, Wand with a special back, one of uh, the Harp or the Nightmare, both of which were already used, so it's like, you know, it wouldn't have done a whole lot. Well, actually, Symbol would have been able to bring back a, uh, maybe, like, a Harp or something, but it still wouldn't have been, like, the ideal scenario. Like, maybe he would have made Dengirsu. Yeah, actually, probably would have been able to make Dengirsu uh, to send and then attack over the uh, Dragster and then make Galatea and then have Crescendo. Um, oh, no, he couldn't attack because he already used his battle phase. My mistake. But um, he still could have ended on Crescendo if he had Wand instead of Gizmek. So I guess having Wand there would have been be more beneficial. But he uh, sends the Vortex with the Dengirsu anyway. So, which is like, it's he could all the board, much in part due to me misplaying. And, uh, like, I can't really fault myself too much for not negating Jackalope because, like, a lot of the time that's not really the best play. But, uh, definitely not bouncing the hers off the seal was a big mistake. That was definitely un undoubtedly a mistake. Uh, so we draw a Dark Worm for turn, which, I mean, we have a pretty solid hand for follow up. We have complete scales as well. And, uh, we're able to just normal summon the Dark Worm. We actually clear our own Dragster just so I can make a bigger Pendulum summon. Because I'm pretty sure I can like go for a pretty big push here. Uh, so I Pendulum Summon 3. And uh, Jackal's free to negate. I make a Borload so that he can't like Symbol Revive Dengirsu or Symbol Revive Galatea on his next turn. Um, that's like my line of play. Because I can't really go and make Dweller right now. Not with the cards that I had access to. Unless if I force, uh, like just, you know, forsake the Jackal King. Which I really didn't feel like was necessary. I felt like this line was, you know, good enough. So we boil a take, we attack with Jackal, he goes Gizmek. I think he's expecting me to negate it, but I choose not to because I can just go damage step boil load uh, to clear the uh, Gizmek. And um, yeah, at this point, like he just passes, his Dengirsu comes back to him, and I am able to actually negate the Gizmek this time with the Jackal King because they didn't use it previously, just so I can push for game. So I go ahead and um, yeah, pen summon two, and I just go ahead and like go in for battle phase. This is what fifty four plus uh, eighteen is seventy two plus nine is eighty one, uh, and obviously the Gizmic and Grave will just get negated by the Jackal. And I was confident the card in his hand was just dead, so didn't bother, and we went off the back of that. So pretty good win against Cyber Orcus. We'll move on to match three. Alright guys, so we're at match 3 now, and uh, how is this for an interesting turn of events? I'm actually playing against my own favorite deck, uh, Lunalite Orcus here, uh, and I'm not using Lunalite Orcus myself. So this, for me, was more kind of a test to see how well I actually knew my own deck. So this is, uh, again, viewers from my stream, so you can expect to, you know, you can expect that people who watch my videos are fans of the Lunalite decks, so 
not too surprising that one would pop up here, which is uh, again good for me to test how well I actually knew my own deck. So he uh, goes Armageddon Knight for a Martin. Uh, he searches the Serenade Dance. I'm thinking alright, Sand has to be pretty explosive because uh, you know he has to have a way to get the Serenade Dance in Grave reliably. He goes straight up into Neoil Azathoth, which I think is fine. Um, like I personally would have probably tried to go for the Nessie first, but uh, it, it's all right. It's like not you know that big of a deal because either way he wouldn't really be able to use Neoil as a first effect anyway, so like it's totally fine. Um, so I snipe the Nessie. Uh, he goes for uh, a Jackalope now, and I actually hit the Serenade Dance, which is kind of unfortunate because um, now he just has a free way to get that in there. But he goes uh, Phoenix into the Mermaid, and Mermaid is going to pitch the Snake, which grabs the Orga Sniper from deck, and then he's going to hit the Snake. So, or use Snake Effect. So, here what I would have done is I would have opted to use the uh, the Serenade Dance to pitch the Orga Nightmare out of his hand, uh, Special Summon Collider Chick, uh, Collider Chick Dump, and then use Martin Effect in Grave to bounce a Tiger. Overlay those two. Actually, I'll talk about that more a bit later. Because uh, I believe he does go for Serenade Dance, yeah. So here it would have dumped, and then um, he actually doesn't ever dump with Kaladachik here, which will come up later. But he uses Martin effect in Grave to bounce a Tiger. So here what it would have done was overlaid these two. So I'm not sure if he's playing the Curious Griffin like combo or if he's like playing a Floodgate for it. But if he was, like overlaying these two for a Four Strix and then making Curious with the Nightmare, Snake, and the Four Strix. Um, and then Scale Tiger bring back whatever he detached out the four strix and then make griffin pitching the zephros then he would have zephros and then another summon for either a rank four plus a galatea crescendo or he can go galatea ding crescendo instead of a rank four and either way that would have been fine if not he could just go for like a rank four um and then like an appaloosa play which he does end up going for um so he goes tornado here and he makes galatea and he scales tiger and realizes he doesn't have any uh anything to um, I need to bring back because he, uh, you know, he used his, or he didn't use his uh, Collider Chick, and we, his sets Crescendo, which would become apparent later. Um, he pop, has to pop his own Tiger now off the uh, Tornado. If this was a different rank four, that would have been pretty bad for him. But uh, he's able to like somewhat recover and then go into Appaloosa, and then uh, Nightmare will be able to dump the Symbol, and then Symbol bring back Galatea. So like this is still like a fine play. Um, it's still like troublesome for me to out because I drew three one ofs. Uh, so, actually, four if you count the dragon. Five if you count the upstart, honestly. But, like, upstart's a card that like you would be fine with drawing anyway. But, anyways, um, yeah, here I go and try and fish for things with the upstart. And then I go ahead and use the Oracle for uh, Zephyrath. I'm trying to like force his tornado dragon just to see what I'm working with. Um, he doesn't bite. So I then scale as a frat. He doesn't respond to it. I have Providence. He doesn't respond to that. Um, so I grab a Wendy, and I use a frat effect. And he doesn't actually tornado it or anything, which like is very surprising to me. So I probably shouldn't have used Providence right away. I probably should try to use a frat first. That way I could have like searched the um, the Fran you if needed off the Providence. Like I was kind of assuming that he would let this resolve. So it's kind of like a big mistake. And then here is kind of. This, this was kind of a big oversight on my end. Uh, I totally forgot that when Zephyrthubans and Scale are like any of these efforts besides Zephyrath, you're locked into special or Pendulum Summoning monsters besides these Zephyrs or whatever archetype, other archetype that they're a part of. So in this case, Tower Knights. In Wendy's case, it'd be Ritual Beasts. Um, so yeah, definitely totally forgot about that. I just wanted a low scale so I could like Pendulum Summon out like the Wendy and as much as I could. But um yeah, realistically, what I should have done was, like, uh, because Zephyr Thuban was in my hand, and, like, that's the only Zephyr low scale I can send off Zephyrath, it actually is kind of, it was definitely a brick in that case, because, like, what I would have ideally wanted to do was send the Zephyr Thuban off the Zephyrath, and then scale in Dimion, so I could Pendulum Summon out the uh, Aether as well as the Zephranu and the Wendy, so I can Chain Block. Um, so, yeah, or I could have, like... Uh, special summoned out the Zephyr Thuban as well. So like I could have gone like, instead of searching out Wendy, search out the Zephyr, Th um, sorry, the Zephranu. And then I would have had like Thuban in scale, or sorry, Th I'm like confusing everybody, I'm sure. All right, so what I wanted to do was, like I said, 
send Zephyrthubin to the extra deck with the Zephrath, have Endymion in the scale, and then instead of this Wendy up here, it would be the Zephranu. So I would be Pendulum Summoning this Zephyrthubin plus the Zephranu plus Aether, and then I can chain block uh, Thubin and Aether. That way um, I could out the Appaloosa because it's once per chain, and it can't re directly respond to both of them. So uh, definitely, definitely drawing this Thubin actually hurt a lot in the context of my overall hand, but scaling it also was not very good here because of the fact that, um, you know, I'm kind of locked into Zephyrs. So what I maybe could have done was, like, in this hand that I did draw the Thuban in, like, search a different card off of the Providence. Uh, that way I could, like, scale Aether maybe and, like, summon Endymion. Um, even though it wouldn't have really done anything, but, like, it would have just been an extra body. Like, I could have attacked over Appaloosa with it. Um, so that's something to consider, but yeah, like, definitely the biggest thing was drawing Thuban was the worst thing, so he doesn't negate Zephranu either, um, even with, uh, Appaloosa, so, like, that's kind of an interesting thought here. So, uh, I am going to use the War to force the, uh, Crescendo, because I target Galatea, and then I'm going to Tribute Summon the Aether, and then use its effect, which forces an Appaloosa, um, to, like, negate, and then... We just, uh, you know, we kill it in battle. He doesn't ever end up actually using his Tornado Dragon, which I'm not quite sure why. Maybe he thought that Providence could protect it, but it doesn't work the same turn it's sent to the graveyard. So, um, like, maybe he thought all, all my cards are protected right now, so... Um, here I'm, like, debating if I, like, make a push with Electromite, but, like, I can't really make a big board since I, uh, you know... I didn't really think it was worth it. Like, I could have gone for a Dark Worm. Um, and maybe, like, there's a line where I go for a Dark Worm and then like, go Dragon Ravine, but he still has Tornadoes, so, like, either he would have popped whatever I targeted off Electromite, or he would have popped the Ravine itself, because, like, Electromite plus Dark Worm is not enough to do the full Guard Dragon combo, you need one more monster, so, uh, I decided in the end it wasn't worth it, and I just decided to pass my turn. He goes ahead and has a full Orcus play left over, because he has a, night a Spare Nightmare in Grave, and he has a Crescendo as well if he wants to use that, but, um, he doesn't end up having to use it. He goes for World Wand to summon back Symbol. He makes Boar Sword with all his monsters and a Symbol Revive. And then make a, make a uh, Dengursu to send my Zephranu. And then that's game right there. So uh, we did an okay job playing through the board. Uh, the hand wasn't the greatest. Maybe I could have played that more ideally if I was a more seasoned Pendulum player. I'm sure you guys can tell me in the comments below if uh, there were any inoptimal lines that I made. But um, yeah, we decided to go first. And this is kind of more of a test to see how well I actually know my own deck. He actually draws Nibiru, but um, we have Servant, so we can actually just play around that no problem. Scale Servant, Scale Oracle, grabs a Frath, um, Scale Chronograph, get Time Gazer, protects herself from Ogre, and we get Zephrath, so we're pretty good to go here. Um, we have Jackal, and we have Servant, and then we get more counters, so um, yeah, we're pretty, pretty set here. We haven't normal summoned yet, so like... I spend more time than I probably should have. Um, like in real time, I spent like too much time. Uh, I targeted Oracle just because I didn't want to. Like I wanted to have an extra monster in my hand to make sure that uh, I got the Dragster online, and I didn't want to like rely on the draw of Electromite. Like it could have. It was most likely going to be beneficial, but I didn't want to take that chance. So we normal summon, grab Gate Zero, scale to Gate Zero, and then we go and Pendulum Summon after using Hours of Wrath for Zephranu. We summon out Zephranu and the Thubim. We go ahead and grab Providence off the Zephranu for Divine Strike, pretty standard stuff here, and then we go for full Guard Dragon play. So I'm actually just going to fast forward this. Uh, there's literally nothing special going on here, it's the exact same play that I've done numerous times in this video already. So we end on a Jackal, a uh, Dragster, Vortex Seal, and Divine Strike. So like I would say it's like maybe not the highest, highest ceiling, but it gets the job done very consistently and you like almost are always guaranteed a divine strike which i feel is like a very very important piece of disruption says so um so like this is something that i talked about on stream for quite a while like as i was doing it so like my thought process is whenever they normal summon emerald bird and try and use the effect if you have a negation i always say probably it's better to use it because the cards i is trying to discard are going to be either Serenade Dance, which in this case it is, or it's going to be a Martin, which searches Serenade Dance and gets itself engraved, which is really good, or it's a Collided Chick, which means that like he has the Tiger play, uh, and it like brings back Tiger. It's like it brings back Collider Chick. So no matter what, 
he pitches off this emerald bird it's going to get him value and like he wouldn't forsake a tiger to you know you wouldn't forsake a tiger off the emerald bird you know, just to try and get an extra draw that's uh, not value there so yeah i decide it's probably actually a good idea to get emerald bird and grave because now he doesn't really have the graveyard setup he wants and he doesn't get the extra card uh like graveyard setup is really really important for uh, lunar lights so i'm like very well aware of this so he uses his mothman and i hit the serenade dance anyway so uh or actually no i don't i i hit, hit a two not a three sorry um so i hit the mothman and then uh he used the Mothman effect, like so. This is like an instance where I'm like, do I negate uh, dangers? But uh, like, I almost was gonna negate Mothman in hand again, but ended up negating it in grave anyway. Cause like, I'm still thinking, all right, he has a card he wants to discard off of the Emerald Bird, so Mothman's gonna pitch that card. So I'm just gonna negate that for sure. So use Vortex on that. Um, here's something I probably should have done. I probably should have done a Hieratic Seal to bounce Tenki since it's once per turn, and then use Aether to banish the Set Perfume, which would have been actually super super good for me. Um, so yeah, a bit of a mistake there, um, or not necessarily even a mistake because we end up still like breaking through everything anyway, but like it would have been like, it would have been a lot of value because then he would be able to get, been able to get perfume like at all, um, like any value out of it, no revive or no graveyard effect and that would have actually just straight up ended his turn. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a mistake, but like, as in like it's not optimal, but I mean, I didn't know for sure the other cards in his hand, I didn't know he had a Nibiru at the time, so yeah. But he goes flips the perfume on the emerald bird. It is once per turn for its effect, so he can't use it there. But uh, he does have the uh, perfume to go ahead and search for another copy of Tiger. Um, Tiger is like public enemy number one. Um, so yeah, he's going to use Serenade Dance and he's going to summon Collider Chick. And now at this point, here I go Seal to go ahead and bounce the emerald bird and Aether banishes Collider Chick, which funnily enough can trigger Collider Chick's effect. But um, yeah, that ends his turn. Like, just in general, like I didn't even have to negate the tiger at that point with divine strike, because his cl er, his classic was in his hand and he had no lunar lights in grave at all. So yeah, uh, here we open like not the most broken, but it is enough to get us there with the with the double Lantia and we still have a we have a hand we can pendulum summon, so it's a uh, it's totally fine. So yeah, uh, he sets Tanky, he uses his Nessie, so he has multiple Tigers, that's why he felt comfortable not scaling one, because I do hit one and I'm like, wow, his hand has to be pretty good if he's uh, comfortable getting rid of a Tiger there. He rips a Armageddon Knight off the top and he normal summons it, and he's going to send a uh, Martin, Martin searches Serenade Dance. And he scales Tiger, brings back the Martin, overlays for a Niarla, and at this point I obviously have to land to you. Um, I always like to hold it for as long as I can just so they commit resources. And the thing that I was doing with, at Niagara was like siding Gamma for people who shotgun Lancia, but I don't think anybody shotguns Lancia anymore. Um, the only time then it would be useful is like if you open a Foolish Burial Goods and you have like a Perfume Engrave and then they like try and Lancia you there and then you can like punish them with Gamma. But like then you have to draw Goods and Gamma specifically together and that's just like that's not enough to justify Gamma being like by itself, you know, there. But I think still think against Dimension Shifter, it's like maybe worth signing in. But uh, I digress. He goes Azla afterwards, uh, and then he goes Phoenix into um, Mermaid, and then he grabs his Orcus Nightmare, and uh, he goes Tanky to search for a Collider Chick. Um, yeah, I believe he uses his Martin, and then he brings back a Tiger off the uh, other Tiger, which is pretty cool. And then he goes and makes Appaloosa. Uh, I think you should have made Galatea personally before that, just to like have the Galatea engrave, um, like in case he wanted to bring it back off symbol later. Uh, but like this is still fine. Martin doesn't get banished, uh, and Tiger goes to the extra deck. We fix this later. Uh, so he's Appaloosa with four counters, but uh, we can actually play around this quite well. So we draw a dead pa spell power mastery, but it's like totally fine. We're gonna search the, the uh, Mighty Master off of it, which puts two counters on Endymion, um, or Servant rather. I keep I call them all Endymion. I should not do that. Um, so I get a fair counter on Servant after scaling the Mighty Master, and then I go ahead and bring the Jackal King out. Uh, the zones are probably like not ideal here, uh, I like, even move the Jackal, but it's still probably not the best. I should probably have Jackal King where Servant is right now, and then put Servant somewhere else, but that's totally fine. Uh, so now we have two counters, and we're able to normal summon Dark Worm. Um, if he at all uses Appaloosa, I can use Jackal King to remove both of these counters. 
uh, since Appaloosa is once per chain, it would negate and destroy the Appaloosa, and that just clears it straight away. So now he's basically just locked. Like, he wasn't able to ever use this card, which is why, you know, like, it's not always the most ideal. Uh, at least by itself, it's not ideal. Like, with, like, if this was, like, an Evil Swarm Nightmare with this, then, like, Evil Swarm Nightmare could, like, flip these down to force the Jackal, and then I could, like, negate with Appaloosa and then flip them down anyway. And then still have three Appaloosa negates and a Nightmare, or Nightmare book, but, um,. Obviously, with his hand, he couldn't, you know, particularly do that. But he uh, goes for a... Or sorry, I go for a Electromite after normal selling the Dark Worm and grabbing the Gate Zero. Electromite grabs Zephrath. Uh, I'm going to target the Mighty Master to get the uh, Zephrath. I draw a Zephrath, which like, isn't most ideal, but I just, you know, grab Wendy and then I Pendulum Summon everything. Um, so, yeah, I go full Guard Dragon combo. Uh, I, I forgot Zafran you there, or yeah, so I just quickly grab Providence and grab Divine Strike just in case this game somehow goes late, but we should just be ending the game anyway. Uh, we go LP, Triple Burst, uh, Distrudo, Agrapain, um, uh, it's kind of lagging a little bit here, but uh, yeah, we get Vortex and we bounce the Appaloosa, and then Distrudo goes ahead and summons itself, um, and we basically make Boros Sword, and that is the OTK right there. So yeah, Lancia definitely hurts uh, Orcus variants, but Lunalites, uh, especially if like they are relying on their graveyard setup like the Serenade Dance, like if you're able to just drop it early, then that's pretty good. So yeah, uh, that's going to be it for match 3. We're going to move on to match 4 now. Alright guys, so we are into match 4 here, and this is going to be against Cyber Dragon, but it's not the Orcus variant, it's the uh, trap build that topped YCS Niagara Falls. It's a Yasin's build. So yeah, um, we are going to be going first again because we won the die roll, and we open pretty well here. We have servant and ways to enable or her again. So yeah, we have a pretty good start. We have the Zephyr combo as well, so we're able to play around the um, like any hand traps that he might have. And like, it's kind of awkward here because like. Uh, I'm supposed to scale the Servant by the, or sorry, the Mighty Master to get Jackal up to three counters before uh, going to watch him. That's what happened there. But um, anyway, uh, yeah, like it's a little awkward with like having to have already committed my normal summon uh, for the Servant in order to make Electromite to begin with. Um, and they also didn't really have low scales at the time. So like, I kind of have to like consider, all right, how am I going to get out this Dark Worm? Um, but like the solution is pretty simple. I was just like overstressing. I was kind of like playing late into the like not even night. It was like 1 a.m. at this point. But anyway, um, yeah, I was like stressing a bit too much, but it's a pretty easy solution. I actually go ahead and negate this Phantasme, I believe. Yeah. So I pop the uh, Mighty Master to get Servant back, and then I draw. Um, that way I can just Pendulum Summon the Dark Worm for my extra deck. I don't know why that didn't occur to me this whole time. But, um,. Yeah, so I draw a gate zero, which is actually a little unfortunate because I, I don't get to search it. And I also don't get to do the full guard dragon play, which also kind of sucks. So after using Zephrath, I just do the um, the bad play, <laughs> basically. So uh, I use Providence off the Zephrania to get the Divine Strike and then do the like bad play. I just fast forward here. It's basically just Seal Vortex Divine Strike, no Dragster. Um, because I can't pen some of this since if I have to scale 7. So, yeah. Um, he just ends up scooping and I forgot to make it a match, so uh, we just go ahead and go into game 2 right here. Yeah, so, um, he opens really, really nicely here. He has emergency uh, to be able to grab himself an overflow. And he has two pops for it because he has OG Cyber Dragon in hand. Uh, and he has a uh, cyber load fusion, which allows him to shuffle them back, uh, which will become very, very important later. And he has double compulse. So, uh, yeah, we're in a pretty rough spot. Our hand's nice, but uh, I'm not sure if it's that nice. Like, I am not a pendulum expert, so there's definitely ways that maybe could have played this better. But uh, also, I didn't have servant, which uh, kind of hurt, but not hurt, but like it would have helped to be able to play through all these disruptions. So, yeah, go ahead and scale Dark Worm and use it to add gate zero. He has no response to this. Um, so I scale chronograph, use it to uh, get time gazer out. Because I know he has overflow, so I'm trying to like, protect my scale so I can do a pen summon. 
So I get Zephranu out uh, with the Zephrath. And here I'm like considering Pendulum Summoning, but uh, I instead go for a Dark Worm and that's a misclick. Uh, I go to Electromite. And then I grab Aether to try and like get it back and then do the Pen Summon. Uh, so yeah, I basically grab Aether off the uh, Electromite and pop the Dragon Ravine since I don't think Ravine would have done much here. Like I want to keep all the cards in my hand. Um, like admittedly, maybe drawing the card would have been good, but um, yeah. So now here he knows I'm gonna Pendulum Summon for sure. There's like nothing else I can really do. So he goes, um, he goes Overflow, and then he chains Compulsory to get my Time Gazer. That way my scales don't, you know, they can't survive. So uh, he manages to pop my scales. I do get a draw off Electromite, which is uh, all right here. But um, yeah, you're gonna see he has another way to deal with my scales. So I'm like thinking, okay, so I can like go as a Frath, send as a Fraxaton, or actually no, not I can't send because it's a hard one to turn. Sorry, uh, but it's a scale five, so I can like summon Aether, summon Zephranu, and uh, Chronograph, and instead of like a decent good play here. Um, but then he goes Cyberload Fusion to shuffle these two back. Uh, and then he grabs himself Rampage, which on Fusion Summon, he gets to target spells and traps on the field uh, and um, just pop them. So this actually can miss timing. It's a when you can effect. So uh, don't chain this to the uh, Chronograph. You notice he says on Resolution. Um, he doesn't like chain to it. So if you chain to it, it actually misses timing. So that's, that's a fun fact, because this would be chaining too. So anyways, um, yeah, I can't really play out of that because I have two scale fours in my hand and we basically just lose. So game three, I'm able to go first. It's looking pretty good. I don't side too much. I do side Cosmic because he has like a lot of traps, but uh, this hand is pretty bad, especially against Cyber Dragon, which can just contact away anything that I put in the extra deck. So like, even if I, you know, try and go for a small play, it wouldn't have really panned out. So uh, I actually could have tried for it though. So like what I should have done here is a... Uh, Go for gate zero, scale gate zero, scale dark worm, pendulum summon the uh, the Thuban, uh, and then go ahead make Electromite, and then uh, send a Chronograph, and then pop a scale, add back Chronograph, Chronograph special itself, and uh, a Destrudo, and then like try and do play like there, but um, or I could have like not summoned the uh, Distrito and like use its own effect to like put itself in the uh, main zone as a level 1 so I could make it guard dragon with it because uh, if it's a level 7 it can't be used for LP but uh, I don't see any of that line but and if I, even if I did he had impermanence anyways so, like it wasn't you know even really on the table I just set cosmic and pass I didn't really see that line at the time I forgot about like sending chronograph I like typically don't think about that uh, so as is something that more seasoned players would do and he actually has an OTK here so he's gonna go normal summon core search uh cyber emergency search a hers and then he goes into i believe seeger and then he goes galaxy soldier pits hers and then he goes uh double searches basically or like recovery um like i think it adds back from grave yeah and then he goes uh soldier again uh make nova and then make infinity basically or make nova uh, not make infinity, make Nova summon it back and then do the Nova OTK with uh, its own effect and Seager. Like Nova pumps itself too, and Seager does too. So it's like just a straight up OTK. Um, and I reveal my hand to him. So, like, again, even if I went for the line with Electromite to like send a uh, chronograph, he had impermanence anyway. We were talking about this just then. So, uh, not really that worth it. Yeah, so we're actually talking about this on the side here. Uh, yeah, and I, I realized that like after he said that I had a play, I was like, oh yeah, I guess I'm chrono. And then, um, yeah, so basically that's what happened. So yeah, we lose this one and I was like kind of like trying to redo it. But uh, yeah, that's the end of match four. We end up losing this one. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and move on to match five. Alrighty guys, so this is going to be the final match in this uh, series. Or in this episode. I don't know why I keep calling it this, this series. <laughs> it's not the final match in the series. Don't worry guys. There's plenty more to come. But um, yeah. Let's go ahead and jump right into match 5. This is against uh, BA Orcus, which is a deck that I think actually has a lot of potential. Uh, just kind of overshadowed by the other um, Orcus variants right now. But it uh, definitely has ways to access the Orcus lineup, obviously, just by milling with Dante, even if Mermaid gets hit. So, not a big deal. Um, I just tell him. He actually like was randomly spectating me, I believe, in the last game. 
uh, this guy, and he is a viewer of my uh, channel, but d didn't know I was streaming at the time, so I was just telling him about it. But uh, we opened Seven again, but not that many spells, so no real way to enable it. Um, so we just Pendulum Summon our uh, Zephanu that we sent off the Zephrath, as well as the uh, Jackal King. Uh, we hard drew both of our targets, by the way, for uh, Seven, which definitely sucked. But yeah, we search the Providence, and then we go and s set up an Electromite. He Ghost Ogres it, so that kind of sucked. I had to play if I uh, was able to send Chronograph, so I just sent Dark Worm instead. But if I was able to send Chronograph, I could like pop the um, Zephrath out of back, summon like Endymion, summon Chronograph, uh, summon Distrito, make LP, do the Guard Dragon play, and on um, Endymion on top of everything else. Uh, and a Divine Strike too. But here I'm just ending a Divine Strike because of that Ghost Ogre, so definitely sucked. And we're just hoping that that one negate gets us there. Uh, so he goes summon wielder, summon tracker, and then he makes cherubini. Uh, and then he goes ahead and um, sends calcap for cost. Yeah, it sends for cost. We were talking about it a little bit, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure it does send for cost. Uh, and yeah, reading it, it actually is before the semicolon. So yeah, definitely that sends as a uh, as a cost. So he goes and reveals Snake afterwards. Um, I obviously don't choose to negate his Calcab with Divine Strike, I just save it. Um, so I hit the Snake, it specials itself. And then... Uh, I don't remember what else he decides to do. I think he just goes Orcus Combo, yeah. So he goes Orcus Combo, Pitch Graph, uh, Graph Special, Skarm, Skarm Dies, uh, Orcus Nightmare, and Mermaid go into the Galatea, and this is a standard play. Um, I don't believe he can OTK. Uh, so he goes Galatea Shuffle to get Babel, uh, he hard drew Crescendo, so uh, he goes ahead and does the play with uh, Degirisu, and he sends my Servant away, and then Simplify Galatea, and he gets in for a fair amount of damage there before passing, so I have to get past one negate, and this hand's not looking the greatest, but it is manageable if uh, I play the hand right, especially with this hard draw and Dragon Triumph return. So, at this point, I'm able to use Shrine to send the Dark Worm. Uh, Dark Worm effect specials itself, and then he chooses to negate the Dark Worm when I go and search for Gate Zero. Um, so, at this point, I'm thinking, okay, Zephrath is scale 5, and Demion is a uh, scale 8, so I'm able to uh, scale it. And then, let's see, I think I Pendulum Summon 2. There's not really a point in using Zephrath because I can only Pen Summon 1 from the extra deck anyway. Um, and I can pen summon this distributor regardless, so I pen summon two, and then we go ahead and search our providence off of the um, of the Sifanyu. So we search our Wendy. We haven't normal summoned yet, which is pretty good. So we make a uh, beat cop, normal summon Wendy, add back Sifanyu, and then we distributor target the uh, the Wendy, and then we go for the guard dragon play actually. So. I was thinking about making Borlord possibly, but this play is just better because we have to play Aether still. Aether is just putting in so much work here. Um, go ahead, make Guard Dragon Agrapane, and then make a Vortex to bounce the seal. Uh, he changed Galatea because he has Babble up, that's totally fine. Um, and then we get him for 5k, uh, similar to the match 1, if you remember. This is like kind of how, well, how I uh, broke the board. And then we make seal, we set divine strike, and we are in a pretty good spot here. Um, he actually is playing solemn strike, which is pretty interesting. I didn't even know that. I just now saw it. But uh, he's playing like actual back row, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna vortex negate that, and that is gonna be the end of that because uh, he doesn't really have good follow up for orchists. Um, and yeah, we win off of the back of that. So going into game two here, he is going to, I believe, go first. Um, I went first that last game, even though I didn't really resolve a combo, but yeah. Um, he His only real good play is a tour guide, which he does fire off, and I don't have hand traps, so he's pretty safe. Um, Graph specials Seer, and then he has the Cherubini to send a Libic, which specials the Farfa. Gonna overlay for a Dante, and he's gonna mill some cards. He mills a Harp, which is pretty nice for him. Um, he's going to go into uh, Phoenix, into uh, the Seer Dante loop, and he's going to pitch uh, a Seer for the Mermaid. At this point, I was thinking, why would you, why would he? I wonder why he would pitch Seer for uh, Mermaid and like not keep the Seer in hand, because that's certainly what I like to try and do is just keep it in hand. Um, 
like just to make sure that loop doesn't get disrupted. But uh, anyway, pitches far for to make Beatrice here, uh, which is right here. So I'm like thinking the other two cards in, in his hand have to be pretty good. So uh, he makes Galatea, and then he goes uh, Harp into Symbol, and he still has a Nightmare that he hasn't had to expend yet, so that's pretty good for him. He makes a second Galatea, Symbol revives Galatea after he uses um, the effect to shuffle and get his Crescendo online, and he makes Dengursu as well. So this is a pretty good setup, and he has uh, Babel as well. So. Um, he has two sets, and I'm like, I didn't see the strike last game, so I didn't know he was like playing actual like back row and stuff. Uh, but in standby phase, he actually goes Beatrice right away, and he sends a Skarm. And then I'm thinking, well, why is this? Like, why is he adding like a card back instead of saving like Beatrice? Uh, and I realize he has two Farfer in Grave, and he's probably not playing more than two. I don't think. Um, so the logic is that he's probably going to try and get the Seer Grave somehow, so he can see revive Farfa. And then use Farfa to like get an extra interrupt. So I'm thinking, all right, the other one back row we know is Crescendo for sure, and the other one has to be a discard card. And I was thinking like Paleozoic Dinomiscus. That was like my first thought. And then um, Destroyer pointed out in chat that uh, it was Twin Twister, like probably Twin Twister. And I was like, oh yeah, like that's probably more reasonable than Dinomiscus. But um, yeah, I, I was like on the right track with the whole. Oh, it needs to be like a discard, like a card that you want to discard so we can do the Farfa play. Which, um, you know, like I, I used to play BA quite a bit, and that was like a cool thing you could do. Well, I totally forgot about Twin Twister for some reason. Um, but yeah, so now like we have to play around Twin Twister, Crescendo, and Farfa basically. So uh, quite a bit to work through, but we can definitely do it with this hand. Uh, so we go Dark Worm, and we try and use Dark Worm's effect to grab a Gate Zero, and he actually uses Crescendo on it. I think he used it a bit early there. Um, like getting a Gate Zero isn't like the biggest problem, especially like since I haven't like committed a normal summon either, so I can like still get pretty good things. But in this case I didn't really have a low scale so I had to kinda of work with the Aether. Uh, I really, really don't like scaling Aether, but um you know sometimes it does get you there with like the way that uh it works out. So um Yeah, so we have pendulum summon, uh it says pen two, that should just be pen one and like a normal summon of Dark Worm. Uh, I can't pen summon this Dark Worm here. Um, I hope that it doesn't actually affect the game state. Uh, so we go... Oh shoot, I think this does affect the game state. Shoot! I didn't realize this while playing. So um, this is an illegal play. <laughs> this is an illegal play. This Dark Worm can't be pen summoned. Um, that's kind of awkward. So uh, yeah, he does the play anyway to get rid of my scales. And then he uh, banishes the Zephanyu. That actually is very important because I believe that's like... A very critical part of me being able to break the board is uh, having this Dark Worm on board. Uh, and like normal, like this shouldn't be able to be normal summoned like at all. Um, so, yeah, like, he was like, do you normal already? I was like, I pen summoned too. And like, we both thought that like I pen summoned and it was legal, but uh, yeah, Aether is a scale four, so that's, uh, that's, that's not legal, guys. Uh, yeah, that's, that's not good. Um, so this whole play is actually totally illegal. Um, so you can, I guess, disregard all of this. But like, in a world where we had a scale that wasn't Aether, this play would have been fine. Like if we had a low scale, but uh, yeah, unfortunate that this was all the back of one extra monster getting me there. So that definitely sucks. Um, and I did not realize this until just now recording this. So um, yeah, definitely, definitely changed the game like significantly, like a lot. Um, but in, in both of our defense, it was uh, pretty late. Neither of us caught it at the time, and my stream didn't catch it either. We had like nine or ten people watching, and <laughs> nobody caught it. Uh, so I didn't even realize until just now, and I am I apologize for the uh, discrepancy here. Uh, definitely, that's not a legal play, and um, if you catch your opponent doing it, make sure to point it out. Um, and it was it was definitely not malicious. Um, like neither of us noticed it. Um, like I actually had, I actually like totally didn't even notice till just now, and I feel pretty bad. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, this this whole thing again would have been fine if the skill was not Aether and it was literally any other lower scale. So uh, definitely sucks. Sucks that, that impacted the game so much. Like that made a huge, huge difference. Um, 
So yeah, uh, this I guess you can watch the rest of the game here, but I'm not really gonna commentate over it because uh, like the game state's already like messed up. Um, but like you can see that like I have a pretty like if that play were to resolve the way that I thought it would, like I'd be able to be in a very advantageous position. Um, and he doesn't really have resources left. So like again, in a world where that is legal, that is good, but um, it wasn't. So yeah, here's like the only cool thing that I would point out is like. I used Aether and uh, Borlo to make Heretic Seal for an extra interrupt, and that did actually matter. Um, so, like, it's something that did definitely uh, come into play there uh, in in this accepted game state. But again, uh, it's illegal to begin with. So, uh, yeah. But um, he goes for a Dante, and I think he just bounces with Seal, and that's the end of the game there because I have a Divine Strike. But uh, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely not a legal play. And uh, yeah, I I can't believe that I didn't catch that, and I feel really bad. Um, but when he goes to attach, I just wore it, and then uh, that should be the end of it. But I probably could have, I probably lost that game if it weren't for that extra monster. So like, imagine that. Um, like, we literally did not catch it, and again, it was like 3 a.m. at this point, and. We, I, I just don't know how neither of us caught it, or, and like none of the stream caught it, like I'm astounded. But uh, yeah, looking back now, that is uh, not a legal play, so I won't count that as a complete win. Um, but you guys get the idea of how the deck operates, and again, that, this is like a, sh a showcase as to like how the deck is theoretically supposed to perform under a constrained budget. So let's just go back to the uh, deck list. So here we are, and I can't believe I didn't catch that uh, in match 5 there in the moment, and I want to keep reiterating that I am very, very sorry about that. Um, but, you know, mistakes happen, and, like, not again, like, it just, neither of us caught it. So I guess we've just proceeded with the game. Um, but it did definitely make a big difference in how that performed. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure people who are very experienced with pendulums would, uh, would have caught me on that and be jumping all over me, and I definitely own up to that. That was definitely not a legal play so uh yeah but i anyway i think that you guys can see that um this deck performs actually pretty well even within the uh, budget that we have here um so yeah i'm going to uh put up a new twitter poll so be sure to uh follow me on twitter for that as far as the next uh, deck in the series if that you guys want to see but yeah that's going to be it for this episode of ccc thank you guys so much for watching this video hope you guys enjoyed uh, be sure to leave a like if you did, as well as any thoughts or feedback in the comment section down below. If you want to, you can follow me on Discord, Twitter, or Twitch. All three links are in the description below. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see more informative Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And as always, thank you again for watching. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys!